Today we're gonna dig a hole in that mountain and add that weird looking diver. Hey there, my name is Ali and this channel is all about making you better in Photoshop. We'll start today's edit by creating a new file. Usually I go 4000 by 5000, 150 pixel. But in this case, I'm just gonna lower the image size just for the sake of the video so my recording doesn't go slow. Okay, you don't have to do this step. Okay. I'll start by dragging the first photo, which is this one. This one is the background I'm gonna use. I'm gonna jump to the quick selection tool and then using alt right click I'll make it adjust it smaller or bigger and I'm gonna select the back as you can see here we have some unwanted selections so I'm gonna go to the polygonal lasso tool and I'm gonna hold alt so I minus whatever I don't want from the selection just like that just get rid of the places where the selection didn't go as you want it to go okay like that and then let's close the selection let's create a layer mask this is the opposite of what i want so i'm just gonna press ctrl i okay and i have this one i don't want so i'm just gonna select it and on the layer mask alt backspace to paint black okay ctrl d to deselect now we have this image now what I want to create in this image, I want to create some sort of an underwater here in the mountain. So I'm just going to take the lasso tool and I'm just going to make some sort of a selection. I hope this will work actually. Let's go something like that. Always try when you're making a selection in a mountain to go along with the lines of the mountain. So the cuts look more realistic. Okay, and I'm going to add a new layer and just alt backspace. Just adding any color to see how my selection look like. I'm going to control T. Warp it. And now I can fix my selection. I want it to be a little bit bigger from here. Okay, so this is where our underwater is going to be. Okay, so now I'm going to drag. I have these three photos of underwater. I'm going to drag any one of them like that. Uh, sorry, I'm going to go to the move tool. Move it. Control T to free transform it. Now I'm, I want to adjust it with the perspective. So I'm just going to hold control and do that. And then I'm going to pull this one down. So now it's matching the perspective. I do this by holding control until you get the small white arrow. And then I'm going to make it bigger by holding shift and alt and adjusting it again to the perspective. You see, this is like the perspective, how it's going. Something like that. Okay, then I'm going to rasterize it. I'm going to hold alt. When you hold alt, you see what's happening. You get this box and this arrow. You press click. So now it's only affecting the layer below. Okay, so this is our underwater texture. Uh, I don't like this area. I'm going to make it something like that. I want to erase this part. I'm going to stand on the layer below. This is why I created this layer below. And if I delete from this one, it's going to delete from both. Because this one is only by alt click only affecting what's below of it. Okay, good. Now I'm going to take the main layer. I'm going to hold alt and copy it on top of everything. I'm going to rasterize it and apply layer mask. So now I have, let's go to the move tool. So now I have just a duplicate of this layer. Now I'm going to hold Alt and click and put it below. So now the duplicate of this layer is only affecting inside the water. I'm going to control T, flip it horizontal. And I'm going to move it just to the edges, something like that. Then I'm going to go to edit, puppet warp. What this does, it shows you a grid of the image. I'm going to show you, you're going to understand what I'm trying to do. I'm just going to add some points here on the edge. And then I'm going to move the mountain. Just going to pull it till it's affecting almost all this part. 
something like that. I'm going to press enter. You see now I have the mountain like that. I'm going to show you why. Now if I change this one to overlay, you see what's happening? I have some sort of a mountain texture inside. So it's some sort of a cave or something like that. However, I don't want all of that. So I'm just going to add a layer mask. How layer mask work? When you paint with black, it deletes. Uh, I do this, I make it bigger and smaller by holding Alt, right click, and moving left and right. So now, with the black color, if I paint, I'm gonna delete. So I'm just gonna delete the edge, just very softly like that. I'm gonna bring some of it back by going to the white. And then again, I'm gonna jump to the black. This time, I'm gonna make the brush a little bit harder. And I'm gonna erase some of the edge. As you can see, we have here the mountain, but the part below is too dark and the part up is too bright. I don't like that. I want it to be somehow subtle or even. So I'm going to go to the dodge tool. This makes things brighter. And I'm just going to... Let's first change that to normal first. Let's lower the opacity. Uh, let's try hard light. Uh, okay, hard light worked, but... As you can see here, this is like too orange. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to image, adjustments, hue saturation. I'm going to press on colorize. And then I'm going to choose this blue cyan color. And okay. And I'm just going to lower the opacity. Okay, the problem actually is happening because this point, I don't like this point. You see, it's too like cyan. And then this one is normal blue. So what I'm going to do is on this layer, I'm just going to take the dodge tool. I'm going to change it to burn. And I'm just going to burn this part a little bit. Okay. So now the effect is less subtle. And then I'm going to jump to this one again, actually. I believe it's too big. So I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller like that. Something like that is good, I believe. But this part now is missing, so just adjust it. If I, if you have like some sort of a missing part here, you can just go to the clone stamp tool, hold Alt click to sample from here, and just paint there. Painting over this texture below because I didn't like how it looked. Okay, so now we created the water. But it still have a problem. The edges look too sharp. It doesn't look realistic. So I'm going to jump to the blur tool. And on the main layer, which is the black one, I'm just going to blur the edges a little bit. So we don't have these like super sharp edges. Just blurring the edges just a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to stand on the main layer, this one. First, I'm going to duplicate it. So that if I make a mistake, I have another copy. And I'm going to rasterize it so I'm able to do changes. Then I'm going to jump to the burn tool. And with 100%, I'm just going to very slowly burn the edges. Let's start with highlights because it's very bright. So I'm going to burn the edges with the highlight first. Because this should be going inside, whatever is going inside, it, the light the light is coming from here, from outside, from the background. So it's hitting this part very strong. However, the areas inside, they should have less light because they are not facing the sun like the areas outside. Okay, this might take a little bit of time. Because like we're doing the whole image. Okay, and after I'm done with the highlights, I'm gonna straight change it to midtones. And now I'm gonna again burn in midtones, do the same. Now the midtones will make it darker. As you can see now with it when it got darker, you see now it it, it seems like it's going inside. It's much more realistic. And even if I change to shadows and start doing, you see, it's going to be even more and more realistic. Okay, let's first finish the midtones before jumping to the shadows. 
doing this actually a bit fast for the sake of the tutorial you can take your time doing this like the more accurate you do it the better the result it's gonna be Okay, once I'm done with the mid-tones, I'm gonna do the shadows, but in the shadows, I have to zoom in a little bit because the shadows will make it completely black. I just want the very edge to be that much black. Otherwise, it won't look so good. Just slight edges looking... Okay, now it's much better than before you see I'm gonna show you the before and after you see it looked like it's like very cut using a knife now it looks more natural and more realistic okay now I got this photo let's see if we can make it work actually I chose this one first I wanted to add some sort of a shark or a whale but then I found this guy and I like the photo so I'm gonna rasterize it uh, let's see the best way to cut this. I guess it's gonna work with the quick selection tool because you use the any like the automatic selection tools when there are difference between the background and the foreground. Here it's like more of blue and he's wearing more of yellow. So there is a difference between the two colors. It's okay if you yeah, like the selection doesn't go perfect. I'm gonna add layer mask. Then I'll leave it this way and then I'm gonna take the brush 100% opacity everything make sure you're using the hard one and then with the white color I'm gonna paint with the black color sorry I pressed X to change from black to white you can alt click to solo this layer so you're only seeing this layer nothing else alt click on the eye you press it again you open everything you press it you close everything okay let's bring back that thing on top of his head and let's bring that pipe hold shift and press click to maintain a straight line oh, now I'm holding shift and I'm just pressing click 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 it draws in a straight line any parts else missing I see this part, this one we need it so I'm gonna paint over it but now as you notice we're just doing the opposite of what we want we're removing the guy, we need the guy. So I'm gonna open the layer again and then I'm gonna stand on the layer mask, press Control I. This will give you the opposite of what you want. So now we have the guy. Let's adjust his size. Let's flip him horizontal. Let's put him here where we want him to be. And now Alt click. So he's only on top of the back layer. Let's apply layer mask actually. Okay. The thing is, it's too faded, so I'm going to add a curves adjustment layer, make sure it's linked below, and then I'm going to just... Oh, I need the curves only to affect him, so I'm just going to go to image, adjustments, curves, and I'm just going to make him a little bit darker. Okay, again, image, adjustments, hue saturation, first we fixed the value, the brightness and the darkness, now we need to fix the color. You can see he's too yellow, but the water is too like green and blue. So from yellow to green blue is you move to the right. So you take your handle and you move it to the right. Okay, it doesn't work nice, so I'm going to control Z. Okay, let's jump to the yellow layer. Now we're only targeting yellow. We can move this to target green. We can move this to target more red. And now I want to target the yellow and the green. The yellow and the green. So these two... First points, they tell you what you're targeting, and these two ones at the back is how much they are feathered. Okay, let's move this one like that. So now we're moving the yellow and the green to the right, to more to the blue, and we're decreasing the saturation of the yellow and the green. Okay. Now I'm going to go to Edit, Puppet Warp. This creates again a grid behind him, so I'm just going to add some points. Let's move this hose something like that and what I mainly use this for is his legs I want his legs to be like that so he looks like more he is swimming you see now he looks 
more like he's swimming and he's looking here actually i just had a very a good idea i don't know if it will work it will work better in a dark environment i wanted to add some sort of light from this area here in the middle pointing towards this guy sadly it won't work with this image because this image is too bright if it was a dark environment adding light here would be very interesting you see how ideas come you just look at things and you just like just an idea just popped to my mind okay let's go to image adjustments hue saturation i want to adjust his color with the background let's move this to the right a little bit okay now he's more blue let's desaturate him a little bit okay let's go to image adjustments color balance let's add some cyan i guess this will make it work okay some cyan and finally let's try to change him to overlay or soft light or hard light i guess overlay is good or let's try normal with low opacity normal with low opacity is good overlay with 100% opacity is good but he's too dark let's try adjustments brightness contrast and brighten him up a little uh, no not good i'll stick with the normal and lowering the opacity and if he's too bright you can image adjustments uh, curves and just darken him up a little bit okay uh, i guess we're good like that okay I'm gonna stick with this one. I'm not gonna change anything else. Uh, this area needs to be cut. So I'm gonna go to the magic wand and just select this area and delete. Okay. That's nice already. Let's add any bag. Let's try adding actually another water. I had these several water photos. Let's try this one. Added this one. Let's adjust i do this by holding control alt shift and like pulling down or up something like that let's alt click it on top so now it's only affecting the top part and let's try to change it to soft light hard light overlay i change it by the mouse scroll the soft light is good actually and just lower the opacity a little bit it's much better when you add like some layers on top of everything it blends everything together so it works nicely okay i found this photo i thought it would be useful actually I like this photo photo so much let's try flipping it horizontal okay it suits the background it's bright just like our whole image so i believe it's a good one and it's water and we have water here but here the water is too like green and our environment is a little bit more blue so i'm gonna go to image adjustments hue saturation i'm just gonna move from green to blue to the right so a little bit to the right and okay and now i guess we blended everything together let's now add layers on top of everything to blend everything even more i always start with the curves adjustment layer i like to take the blacks pull them up a little bit then i'll take the shadows pull them down uh, he's going too dark I don't want him to be that dark okay I'll do something after I make this one dark I'm just gonna take a brush let's lower the opacity and let's just paint a little bit on top of him to remove the darkness okay or you can always like do another curve make things brighter and control i now it's invisible now whenever i paint with white it's gonna be visible so i'm gonna paint with white on top of him so now i'm only brightening him up as is like important to our image these two now i'm gonna close them i want to make some change to this guy i'm just gonna very quickly select his jacket doesn't have to be super accurate because he's small in the environment Let's select his jacket. I don't want to select his hands, so I'm just going to hold Alt and remove them from the selection. And I'm going to add a hue saturation layer. And I'm going to press colorize. And I want a certain color. Let's go with red, actually. Because red is opposite to blue. Or maybe orange is more opposite to blue. Let's just, I'll, I'll just increase saturation. And let's try 
different colors. I'm looking out from like a far away point and just trying different colors. Which color look better? I guess red or red red looks the best, or maybe some like something like that. And let's not like make him too colorful, it will look fake. Something like that is good. So I just give the jacket a color so it makes him pop out more in the environment. Okay, let's add some warm color here. Let's bring those back first. And let's add, I'm gonna add a, a new layer. I'm gonna take a brush. Let's choose any warm color, something like orange, something bright orange, something like that. And I'm just gonna paint here some of this orange, something like that. And I'm gonna change that to overlay. And just lower the opacity. Okay, so we added some warmth from here. We can go to a curse adjustment layer. This area is too bright, so I'm just gonna take the very bright points here, pull them down, and take the black points, pull them up again. So now I'm only darkening the bright areas. I'm gonna pull this one below this one so the orange looks more visible. Okay, let's now color grade again everything. Let's jump to color balance. Let's go to the highlights. Let's add some red in the highlights. Some yellow in the highlights. Uh, sorry, let's open it again. Shadows, let's try adding some blue to the shadows. Some cyan to the shadows. Let's try adding a gradient map. I have this one. You can use this one actually. I'll show you how. Let's use this one and just change the colors. How the gradient map works actually, this color affects the dark areas. This color affects the 50%, not dark, not bright areas. Let's change this one to... Let's move this one here actually. Let's make four points. Hold Alt. Make another point. Okay, so this one will move from blue to a little bit brighter cyan. And then this, this one will be an orange, some sort of a bright orange, and this one will be a very bright orange. So Now we created some color map. It goes from blue in the dark areas to cyan in the little bit dark areas, and then it will change to orange, then very bright orange in the bright areas, as you can see here. It looks horrible, of course, but you can always try lowering the opacity, see how it works if you just lower the opacity. You can try to change it to overlay. The overlay looks good actually, see? The before, the after. It added like a tone to the whole image. Also, we can go to the photo filter. Try different photo filters. I just double click it and move my scroll down to jump to different photo filters to see which one suits the image most. Actually, the green look nice. The sepia look nice. So I'm going to add one sepia and one green. Okay. And let's group all the adjustments we made. Control G to group them. You see how we changed the photo? This was the before, this was the after. This is like, it did a lot of effect. Now I want to create some sort of a vignette. We can do it here or we can do it in the camera row filter. I'll do it in the camera row filter. Okay, when I'm done with everything, I hold Control, Alt, and Shift together. Then I press E. What this does, it merges everything into a new separate layer. So now I can go to filter, camera row filter, and edit the whole image in one go. Okay, so now I have the whole image. Let's try start editing. First thing, I just go to the effects. That's the first thing I always do. I only use the effects and the basic and sometimes the camera calibration. The camera calibration, I sometimes try like different colors. This will make more red, more cyan. This will make more like magenta and more yellow. More red, more cyan. This will make more yellow. This will make more... Uh, just like play around to see the colors. I'll just cancel and go again to camera row filter. Go to the FX. Add a vignette. This is something I always do. The vignette is just a circle around the image. 
you can like make it more round more like change the midpoint make it more round more oval feather it or make it like hard of course we need it feathered and of course you're not gonna use it that strong so i'm just gonna lower this one just just very slight something like negative 10 or something like that just to show like it needs to be there but it needs to not be visible that people don't know you added a vignette let's jump back to the basic sorry first in the fx the dehaze i always like to do this removes the fog or adds fog so in this case i'm gonna remove a little bit of the fog and let's go to the basic module uh, i believe the image is a little bit dark let's brighten it up a little bit the shadows and the black brighten them up a little bit the clarity here it makes everything clear or makes everything like very soft i'll add a little bit of clarity on top of everything press ok so now i added everything let's jump again to camera row filter i need to target specific areas okay i'm gonna use the graduated filter i'm gonna make everything zero the graduated filter now everything is zero i want things to be darker and more fog and less clear this i'll use it in the non-important parts non-important parts they don't need to be bright they don't need to be clear they need to have fog so i'm just gonna move it like that i don't know if it, it worked yeah but the effect was very subtle i'll move it also here here i need these parts to be like not clear i don't they are like not important for me let's make it like even less fog more fog sorry yeah, something like that you see now this area became like very unclear that's nice because i don't want people to look here this is not important the important part is here so now what i made is the non-important parts i made them less clear now let's make the important parts even more important i'm not gonna use that one i'm gonna use the radial one now I'm gonna make it more bright, more contrast, more clear, less fog, and whenever I draw now, these effects are gonna happen. Let's make it even brighter, more contrast, more clear. These parts need to be clear, the important parts in my image. I'm gonna undo this one. I need another one on top of this guy. Let's remove the overlay so I can draw another one. Overlay, let's move them around. You can move them around. And I want this one to be like that, targeting like the street. This area. And let's press OK. OK, let's show you before the camera. This was before the camera row filter. This was after the camera row filter. You see now the focus is much stronger here and there. However, I believe it's too strong of an effect, so I'm just gonna lower the opacity of it a little bit. So I have somewhere in the middle between this one and that one. And if I like how the street was done and how the back part, but this part I don't like it, so you can just add a layer mask and using a brush on a black color, you can just erase some parts, sorry, black color, just erase some parts. I don't like this uh, rocks here, so I'm just gonna erase on top of the rocks because the rest is good okay and that's it for today's tutorial if you have any comments or questions make sure you put them in the comment section below and i will reply them as soon as i see them thank you guys